On a previous video, I showed you how to export data from Power BI to SharePoint using the click of a button in Power BI Desktop or in Power BI Service, obviously. And you ask me, is it possible to do it without the button, without people clicking on a button? Yes, it is. So I'm going to show you into this video. Let's get started. Okay, so Power Automate, powerautomate.com, and it will take you to uh, Flow. And uh, we're going to start a new Flow. So we go to New Flow. We're going to schedule the flow. You can have a trigger, obviously, but in this case, we're going to schedule it and say uh, automatic Power BI export. They start in every 10 minutes, for example, or I don't know how much you want it. Create. Probably you would want to have this like once a day, unless you have like live data. So the next step is Power BI, right? Let's grab the data. There is a new operation called run a query against the data set. This is the one that we want. And obviously, where the file that where you want to get data from needs to be published to the service. I've already published mine. It's here in Northwind. And then is the old data, I think. So now we need to write a DAX query. And um, I showed you in a previous video how you can do that, it's two ways to do it. So go and check it out if you need more information. I'm going to show you anyway here, one way. So if you go back to Power BI, I have created a table that gets sales date, order ID, and product ID from the Northwind dataset. And it's just to summarize columns uh, function. Very, very easy. So we're going to copy these, go back to Power Automate, in here, and the syntax is define a variable and then evaluate the variable. So define, make sure you spell it correctly, though, otherwise you're going to run into trouble. Give it a name to these, variable, I don't know, sales. And then we have evaluate and then sales. Save. Give it a quick test just to make sure that you're on track. You know, I wish we didn't have to click so many times just to test something. It's like click, 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 click. So you can see it work correctly, which is neat. So let's go back to edit and continue building. So now we have that every 10 minutes is going to go to the data set and it's going to grab the data that we specified. And now we're going to uh, move it to CSV, move it to Excel, it's just not easy. And if you're just doing it for, you know, saving historical data or things like that, just don't bother with Excel. CSV is a better method to store data. So if you write CSV, it will here create CSV table and the output is the table rows. And we're going to now move it to... Um, OneDrive. I told you how to move it to SharePoint in the previous video, so just for the sake of variety, let's move it to OneDrive. Create a file. And then we have here OneDrive. Unique path of the folder on OneDrive. That one. And then the file name is going to be, as always, I mean, it depends on what you want to do. If you want to rewrite, if you want to... We're going to create a new file. So you to see now and then click OK and then you can add whatever sales. And then the file content is obviously the output of the previous, which is this one that creates the CSV. Save. Test manually. Run. And as you can see, it created the file. If I go to OneDrive, you can see it here. And this is our export. Okay, so now that we have that on the next video tomorrow, I am going to show you how to change the names, but you can see that it attaches the table name to the column name. And that is fine, you know, in case you're getting um, fields from different tables that have the same name. So you can differentiate them, so it's good. But in our exports, we don't want that. So I will show you how to change the names in the next video. I'll see you tomorrow.